going on guys this is stevie hall here with resurgent designs gonna be going over this table that i made for this client out in arizona this was a very cool build this is a piece of uh, live edge black walnut that i got from a distributor down in pennsylvania now this client wanted one of the sides of the table to be completely live edge so that's why you'll see i won't pour any epoxy there on the right side of the screen here uh, that actually was a really cool feature i love the way it came out but this is Total Boat's Thick Set Fathom that I'm using. Ended up being around 15 gallons of epoxy. And the client picked uh, the pigment color of Black Diamond from Black Diamond Pigments. And that's just kind of a black shimmery color. Uh, it's really cool. And also you see a lot of bug holes and, and some of the voids and cracks that I had to clean out. The client wanted just a slight pop of color. So those actually got filled with cobalt blue which was actually a really cool thing once once it was all said and done. So I was glad that they picked that little pop of color. Once I let that cure, I let that sit in the mold for at least seven days, uh, sometimes a little bit more, but I always play on the cautious side, so I let it cure for a full seven. Now I take it out, and the first thing I do is I start square cutting. So this is the Wen track saw, and I have since upgraded my equipment for this step but I now have a festool so take that for whatever it's worth but a square cut here the wind served me well but I can definitely tell the difference between festool and the one I'm using here but very satisfying this last little bit and the peel that off is so rewarding to see that nice square cut uh, I love getting it always cut down to the final dimensions and length and size that I want it to be uh, so I cut that on either end and the long side as well to make sure everything's nice and square before I move on to the next step. Next we go to the C-channel installs and the C-channels are really in place to help keep the pieces rigidity over time. All wood will expand and contract over time. You can't avoid it. There's nothing you can do. But the C-channels actually lay perpendicular to the wood grain and they help keep the pieces rigidity over time as it expands and contracts. So once it does that, the piece will keep it from cupping or warping or anything like that uh, and keeps the piece nice and strong and flat over time not everybody does it but i do it on every big project that i make the c channels that i use are actually from bidwell wood and iron and i really couldn't speak highly enough for the product that they make um, i have links for all the products that i use in the description down below i highly recommend that you guys check them out their product is the best that I've seen and that I've used. You also don't need to do this uh, super glue uh, tactic here that I'm using. I don't do this uh, on any of the ones I do now. So if you see any new videos of me not doing this, that's that's why it's not a necessity, but it also doesn't hurt you. So uh, do that if you'd like, but I actually don't do that anymore. But the C-channel stuff is actually really rewarding. Once you actually get it in place and recessed and slid in there, uh, it's just it's really rewarding to slide that in and, and make sure that the thing is strong and rigid. But now is the marathon of sanding. And sanding is probably the most important step to your projects because it can really make or break everything you do. And if you don't sand correctly, you won't have a proper finish. So I have actually a video of my entire sanding process in a very detailed video, but wanted to show you guys what I did with this. This is actually a sanding technique I learned from Blacktail Studio. Uh, sanding in blocks and wiping away continuously, blowing off the bottom of your sander uh, to keep any of those big swirl marks from showing up. And uh, that's something that really helped change my sanding technique and my finishing as well because it made a huge difference for that. So um, again, this is the most important step. I work all the way up to 220. Uh, I only go to 220 because I'm doing an oil-based finish. So I don't want the wood grain. You know, the higher you go in your wood in your sanding grits, like if you go up to 320 or sometimes people go even higher, you're just closing off the grains that much more. So when I go to apply this finish, this is Rubio Monocoat, I only sanded 220 so that I get maximum penetration of this oil and finish into the piece of wood. So that's something that I learned kind of just over time, uh, but that made a big difference as well in my finish. Um, but this trial technique here, spreading this Rubio Monocoat around, you don't have to be as precise and detailed as I am here. I actually don't know why I always do this, but uh, for some reason I, I really take my time trialing this around. But you really don't have to because you'll see I'm going to come back with a buffer. Um, you really can apply too much 
finished. So you can see I'm only going around and applying more where I need it. So you really just want to apply as much as the piece is going to take uh, because you're going to end up wiping away any excess. So if you keep pouring it on there, you're just going to be getting rid of it. So only apply as much as the piece is going to take. And like I said, you can see I'm going around now with the buffer. This buffer is actually a Craftsman Auto Body buffer that I ended up doing some Velcro strips and adding the buffing pad underneath. So that was kind of a really cheap way to take a $60 buffer and convert it into something that can give me a professional quality finish. After buffing, I don't use that on the sides of the piece or on the edges. So I just use a scrap cut off piece from the, from the buffing pad and I just go around by hand here and buff this into the sides and make sure that's in there nice and good. So this is what it should look like when I'm when you're done buffing. You can see it looks like it's just all sitting on top there soaking in. And I let that sit for about 15 minutes and the Rubio Monocoat will actually start setting up. And then to remove it, I go around with a microfiber cloth and I start removing the excess. Now this stuff will be setting up, so you, you kind of got got to put your back into it a little bit, but uh, you really cannot remove too much. Like I said, when you're applying it, you can't apply too much, but you can't remove too much. So it's already penetrated. It's already soaked into the piece of wood. It's done as much as it's going to do at this point. So anything you're removing is not going to damage or take the finish away from the piece. So I always go around with one rag and remove most of the finish. And then I go around a second time with a fresh rag to remove any of the final excess that's sitting there. So here I am going back with the second rag now. This is fresh, and this is where you can really start finishing the piece off. So I go around, again, working in these little patches, and I'll always go back through with big, long passes across the entire piece to give it a nice, uniform look. And Rubio Monaco will actually take about five to seven days to fully cure, uh, but I let this thing sit in here in a climate-controlled environment for at least seven days before I do anything with it. Uh, but you can see here, this is where I come back with the big final passes to give this thing a nice uniform look. This is fresh after wiping away the excess. You can see just a little sheen on the top of there. Rubio Monaco is my favorite finish to use. It's my go-to for big tables like this. You can see that cobalt blue coming through. Just those little pops there came out really good. Again, you can see the uniform top finish. That sanding technique I mentioned changed the game for me in terms of my finish. Uh, but the Rubio Monocoat looks great. You see a nice uniform, no patches, no streaks. Uh, it is a really uniform look, and I love the outcome. So this client was ecstatic with this when it got delivered. It was a great piece, fun for me to make, uh, and I really look forward to the next one. So thanks for watching this, guys. Drop any comments or concerns below. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon.